Finally, we are doing Sopranos Evil tier list video. Had so many requests about it. Let's get into it. Starting with the big boss, Tony Soprano. Devil tier Tony is the boss, the big guy, the head honcho of the Soprano family. And let's just say, he's not winning any Humanitarian of the Year awards. He's got a rap sheet that would make even the devil blush. From ordering hits to committing them himself, Tony's hands are as dirty as they come. But here's the twist. He's also a family man with a soft spot for ducks, which just makes him all the more complex and, dare I say, devilishly charming. Dr. Jennifer Melfi, neutral. Now, Dr. Melfi is a bit of a conundrum. As Tony's psychiatrist, she's got the tough job of untangling the web of his psyche. She's compassionate and genuinely wants to help Tony become a better person, but she's also deeply conflicted about the ethics of treating a mob boss. She's not in the business of evil, but she's not exactly a saint either. She's the neutral party in a world of chaos. Carmela Soprano. Neutral. Carmela, played by the amazing Edie Falco, is the wife of mob boss Tony Soprano. She's often seen as the family's moral compass, trying to instill good values in her children. While she does benefit from the spoils of Tony's criminal activities, she's also shown to have a conscience, struggling with the moral implications of her lifestyle. So we're placing Carmela in the neutral tier because, despite her complicity, she's not actively involved in the family business's darker side. Christopher Multisanti. Christopher, portrayed by Michael Imperioli, is a bit of a wild card. He's Tony's protege and has done some pretty questionable things, from substance abuse to violent outbursts. However, he's also shown moments of wanting to be more than just a mobster, like when he tried his hand at screenwriting. So, we're putting Christopher in the somewhat evil tier because, while he's done some bad things, he's also a product of his environment and has shown glimpses of wanting to change. Junior Soprano, aka Uncle June. Junior Soprano, often referred to as Uncle June, is the epitome of a Machiavellian character in The Sopranos. As the acting boss of the DeMeo crime family, he's involved in a myriad of criminal activities, from union racketeering to drug trafficking. His portrayal starts off as particularly bitter and deceitful, especially in his attempts to consolidate power and eliminate threats, even within his own family. However, as the series progresses, we see layers to Junior's character unfold, revealing a more considerate and humorous side, especially during his illness and house arrest. Despite these moments of vulnerability, his earlier actions and the consequences they bring about place him firmly in the devil tier. Salvatore, Big Pussy Bon Pensiero, Salvatore, known affectionately as Big Pussy, begins his journey in The Sopranos as a loyal soldier to Tony Soprano and a longtime family friend. His descent into the somewhat evil tier is a tragic tale of a man caught between a rock and a hard place. When faced with a lengthy prison sentence, he becomes an FBI informant, betraying the very people he once called family. This act of betrayal is a significant moral failing, yet it's not without its nuances. Big Pussy's internal conflict and guilt over his actions paint a picture of a man who is not inherently evil but is driven to desperate measures by circumstance. Silvio, with his slicked back hair and sharp suits, is the epitome of a mob conciliere. He's got this quiet magnetism and a sharp intellect that make him a force to be reckoned with. Silvio's not just Tony's right-hand man, he's the mediator, the guy who keeps the peace when things get heated. He's got this knack for timing and strategy, making him the conductor of the mob's symphony. But let's not sugarcoat it. Silvio's hands aren't clean. He's done some dark deeds, and his loyalty to Tony has led him down some morally questionable paths. And yet, his actions are often driven by loyalty and duty, not malice. That's why he's in the somewhat evil tier. He's not a devil, but he's definitely not an angel. Now, Polly Walnuts. This guy's a piece of work. He's got a personality that's larger than life, and a sense of humor that can light up a room. But don't let that fool you. polly has got a dark side that's as cold as ice. He's paranoid, competitive, and let's face it, he's got a bit of a temper too. His loyalty to Tony is solid, but his ambition and fear can push him to do some pretty evil stuff. From his impulsive violence to his childlike need for Tony's approval, Polly's complexities land him squarely in the evil tier. He's the kind of guy who'll crack a joke one minute and crack skulls the next. AJ Soprano. I'd place AJ in the somewhat evil tier. Now, hear me out. AJ is the classic case of a spoiled brat who's had a silver spoon in his mouth since day one. He's got a rebellious streak that's led him to some pretty questionable decisions. 
like vandalizing his school's swimming pool and getting expelled for cheating. But let's not forget, the kid's got issues too, like borderline ADD and anxiety attacks that he's inherited from the Soprano gene pool one. So, while he's not exactly evil incarnate, he's definitely stirred up some trouble. Meadow Soprano. Meadow, on the other hand, is a bit of a conundrum. I'm gonna put her in the neutral tier. She started off as this party-loving, somewhat spoiled teenager who was in denial about her family's business for. But as the show progresses, she evolves. She becomes this achiever, a source of pride for her parents, and even volunteers at a law center. Sure, she's had her moments of moral ambiguity, especially when it comes to her father's business. But overall, she's tried to do good with what she's been given. Livia Soprano. Oh, Livia, where do I even start? She's the mother of Tony Soprano. And let's just say she's not winning any Mother of the Year awards. She's manipulative, self-absorbed, and has a knack for making everyone's life a living hell. Remember when she conspired with Uncle Junior to whack her own son? Yeah, that's pretty devilish if you ask me. So, I'm placing Livia in the devil tier. She's like the godfather of emotional blackmail. Next, we've got Adriana La Serva. Adriana is a bit of a tragic figure. She starts off as this materialistic, somewhat shallow person. But as we get to know her, we see she's got a good heart. Sure, she gets caught up in the mob life, but she's more of a victim than a villain. She even becomes an FBI informant, which in the mob world is a big no-no. But her intentions were never evil. She was just trying to survive. So, I'm going to put Adriana in the somewhat evil tier, mainly because of her association with the mob. But honestly, she's got more of a neutral vibe. Richie April. I'm placing Richie in the devil tier. Why? Well, this guy's got a temper shorter than a New Jersey winter day. He's old school, sure, but that also means he's got no qualms about being ruthless. Remember the time he hit Beansy with his car? Not once, but twice. That's some cold-hearted stuff right there. Janice Soprano. Janice. Oh, Janice. She's a tough one to pin down, but I'm gonna say she's somewhat evil. She's not devil material, but she's definitely got her moments. Like that time she shot Richie? That was pretty hardcore. But then again, she's got these layers, you know? She can be manipulative and self-serving, but she's not all bad. Artie Boko, I'm placing Artie in the neutral tier. This guy's a restaurateur, not a mobster. Sure, he's got ties to Tony and the gang, but at his core, Artie's just trying to run his business and keep his head above water. He's had his moments of weakness, like dabbling in some shady deals, but who hasn't in New Jersey, right? Overall, Artie's a decent guy who sometimes lets his insecurities get the best of him, Furio Junta. Now, Furio's a tough one. He's got that old-school Italian honor thing going on, but he's also a hitman. I'd say he's somewhat evil. He's done some pretty dark stuff, enforcing for Tony and all. But he's also shown moments of tenderness, especially around kids. Plus, the guy's got style and respects women, which is more than I can say for some of the other guys. Bobby Bacala Bacaliri. Bobby's up next, and I've got to put him in the good tier. Yeah, you heard me. For a mob guy, Bobby's pretty much a teddy bear. He's loyal, he's not as aggressive as the others, and he genuinely cares about his family. He's been pushed into doing some dirty work, but it's clear his heart's not in it. Bobby's the kind of guy you'd want as a neighbor, as long as you don't mind the occasional mob shenanigans. Eugene Pontecorvo. I'd place Eugene in the somewhat evil tier. He's got a mean streak, sure, but he's also got a lot of baggage that explains, though doesn't excuse, his actions nine. He's involved in some shady stuff like jury tampering and assault, but he's also shown to be a family man who's caught in a tough spot between the feds and the mob. It's like he's trying to swim upstream in a river of molasses. Ralph Cifaretto. Ralphie. Oh, Ralphie. This guy is a trip to the devil tier, no doubt. He's unstable violent, and has done some truly despicable things, like that incident with the stripper and the horse. Yeah, let's not go there. His actions are often cruel and without any real justification, making him one of the most malevolent characters on the show. Charmaine Bucco. Charmaine is going straight to the good tier. She's one of the few characters with a strong moral compass, consistently standing up against the mob's influence and looking out for her family's best interests. She's like that one person at a party who actually knows how to use a coaster. Reliable, and doesn't leave a mess. Johnny, Johnny Sack, Sacrimony. Evil. Why? Johnny Sack may not be the devil incarnate,
but he's got his hands dirty plenty of times. He's a manipulative power player who doesn't shy away from ordering hits when it benefits him. However, he does show loyalty and a softer side, especially towards his family, which keeps him from the very bottom tier. Anthony Tony B. Blundetto, somewhat evil. Why? Tony B's a tough one. He's got a good heart somewhere in there, trying to go straight after getting out of the joint. But his temper and the allure of easy money pull him back into the life of crime. He's done some bad stuff, sure, but he's also a victim of his circumstances to some extent. Phil Leotardo. Devil. Why? Phil's the kind of guy who holds a grudge tighter than a new pair of shoes. His vendetta against Tony Soprano and his crew leads to some of the most brutal moments in the show. He's ruthless, unforgiving, and takes pleasure in his cruelty. If there's anyone close to the devil tier, it's gotta be Phil. Patsy Parisi, chillin' in the somewhat evil tier, we've got Patsy. He's not your typical cold-blooded mobster, but he's got a dark side that can't be ignored. Like that time he had a gun trained on Tony from afar, contemplating revenge for his twin brother's death. That's some heavy stuff. Yet, he never pulled the trigger. And let's not forget the time he went all gangster on Gloria Trillo, Tony's mistress. Intense, right? But despite these moments, Patsy's shown he can be a family man too, balancing out his mob life with moments of genuine care. Vito Spatafora. Now Vito's story is a wild ride. I'm slotting him into the evil tier. And here's why. The guy was a made man, and he didn't shy away from doing the dirty work. Remember that hit in the hotel? Brutal. But then, there's the other side of Vito we can't ignore. After his secret life came to light, he tried to leave the mob life behind, seeking a fresh start. That takes guts. Still, his past actions and the way he handled his business, especially when he was climbing the ranks, were pretty hardcore. So, despite his attempts at redemption, Vito's past lands him squarely in the evil category. Angie Bonpensiero. Angie's an interesting one, and I'm placing her in the neutral tier. She started off as the mob wife who seemed to be in the dark about her husband's dealings. But after Big Pussy vanished, Angie stepped up. She took over the body shop and got her hands a little dirty with the mob's business. Yet she's also shown a level of independence and resilience, making her own way in the world. She's not exactly a criminal mastermind, nor is she a saint. She's just Angie, doing her best to navigate the life she's been dealt. That's why she's sitting comfortably in the neutral tier. Little Carmine. Landing in the somewhat evil tier, Little Carmine is like that one guy who tries to run before he can walk. He's got ambitions that could fill the Hudson River, but his execution? Well, it's like watching a dog chase its own tail. Entertaining, but ultimately fruitless. He's not the devil incarnate but he's dipped his toes in some shady waters. He's the kind of guy who'd sell you a car with the check engine light taped over and call it a feature. Rosalie. Oh, Rosalie. She's smack dab in the neutral tier. She's the embodiment of, I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. She's seen her share of sorrow, and it's given her this tough as nails exterior. But deep down, she's got a heart that's been through the ringer but still has some warmth. She's not out there pulling the strings or stirring the pot, but she's not turning a blind eye either. She's the type to give you tough love advice over a cup of coffee with a side of, I told you so. Butch. Now Butch is a tough nut to crack. I'd cautiously place him in the evil tier. He's like that silent kid in class who you know is plotting something, but you can't quite put your finger on it. He's got a poker face that could make a statue uncomfortable. Butch doesn't just dip his toes. He swims in the murky waters of the mob world. He's the kind of guy who'd smile at you while planning your surprise retirement party. If the Sopranos world is a chess game, Butch is playing 3D chess. Quietly, carefully, and with a touch of ruthlessness. Benny Fazio. I'm gonna slot Benny into the somewhat evil tier. Why, you ask? Well, Benny's not the devil incarnate. But he's no saint either. He's been involved in some shady stuff, like loan sharking and credit card scams. But you know, he's not the one calling the shots on the big moves. He's more like the guy who's just trying to make a buck without stirring up too much trouble. So he's got a bit of a conscience, but it's not always in the driver's seat. Little Polly. For Little Polly, I'm thinking Evil Tear fits him. He's got that edge, you know? He's not just following orders, he's enjoying the chaos a bit too much. Whether it's throwing people out of windows or just being a general menace, 
Little Polly doesn't seem to have that line most people won't cross. He's not the top dog in evil, but he's definitely not someone you'd want to bump into in a dark alley. Carlo Hervasi. Carlo's a tough one, but I'm leaning towards evil as well. He's a capo, so he's got power, and with power comes some heavy decisions. He's ordered hits, run rackets, and been deep in the game. But what tips the scale for me is his willingness to flip when things got hot. That's a survival move, sure, but it also shows a certain lack of loyalty, which in the mob world is pretty darn evil. Gabrielle Dante? Now Gabrielle, she's going to be in the neutral tier. I mean, she's married to Silvio, so she's definitely in the loop on some level, but she's not actively involved in the business. She's like that person who knows the family business is a bit dodgy but chooses to look the other way. Can't really call her good, but she's not out there breaking legs either. And we are done. This is the list. Which changes you would make, and which one you think is in the perfect tier. Let me know in the comments. I'll see you in the next video for sure. Goodbye.